Where to capture indirects and overhead information. Okay, so some costs are indirect and we have overhead. Yes, we will use WBS summaries for those, okay? But I used basically two or three WBS summaries in the whole entire project with no relationships. So I'll show you those in a minute. I also used a user to find field notes to identify the cost name. I'll show you that. Uh, monthly reoccurring costs can have a budgeted unit associated with them. I'll show you what that looks like. Budgeted units can also be used to track the number of items installed or consumed. I say roughly here because again, um, I just want high levels. I don't want to track one of 12,000 units installed or something like that. Some costs P6 just cannot handle. It's absolutely true. P6 is not an accounting tool. It doesn't handle interest. It doesn't handle reoccurring payments very well. Um, you will have to figure out some savvy workarounds, okay? Let me give you an example. Contractor, in my project, the contractor for establishing a site, S1, basically like clearing the ground and establish and putting up um, barriers and whatnot, establishing that site, they can bill 50% of the total cost once it's established. But because they have to maintain that site throughout the duration of the project, they're able to bill, their, the rules say they could bill 2% of the cost every month until the end of the project where they have to restore the site back to the way it was and then they could bill whatever was, was left, okay? This kind of situation, P6 is not gonna model that at all. But what we did in this kind of situation is we could model it or not, I'm not going to say model it, but we could status it with 50%. And then we could increase the status 2% every month. So we could do actuals, but we couldn't model it in terms of um, plan work. It's just too hard. Okay, so let's go look at P6 WBS summaries. All right, so up at the top of my project, I basically have this summary activity project costs here they all are i just dumped like everything that was an overhead item i put it on there okay so signboards or pre-construction survey noise baseline progress photos even progress photos happening every month right uh i love this the preliminary schedule was only nine thousand dollars <laughs> or the baseline was sixteen thousand dollars it's probably a lot more than that Anyways, we can put high level costs here. So as I was saying, the monthly things that have a monthly cost, like a, a monthly field office, I put in budgeted units to indicate the number of months, okay? So as I'm statusing, I can decrement this, uh, sorry, as I'm statusing, I can increment my actual units up to 28 as I go through. So again, just, not absolutely necessary, but a nice little thing to just help you know that, you know, the original budget was 28 months of costs. And this is the total cost, but there's a monthly cost of like $1,000 or something like that. So I use this as a, a uh, summary and I use this one as well. So this, this one actually captured more construction related items like, um, tree protection, uh, erosion monitoring, removing concrete in different places and whatnot. So you have to become adept at just deciding whether this is easier here or this is easier in a different place. But yeah, you, you do have to make some decisions, okay? Part of the, the challenge here, um, well, actually, no, there's no challenge there. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna say that went pretty good. Okay. Um, so here's the result, earned value ready, cash flow forecast. What we got on the top of the screen here is basically plan value. This is our plan value curve up to $35 million. We got our P6 project. Actually, I'm just gonna show you that. So up at the top, 36 million, 161, 868. And if I head over to my spreadsheet, 36, 161, 688. So we got it to match almost down to the penny. There's a couple pennies difference. And we got our planned value curve. So we're ready to do earned value management with this. 
Cash flow forecast, we are ready. This is our banana curve, our early curve and our late curve. This is a great tool to forecast when your outlays or your income's coming in. It's not exactly in August, it's sometime between August and November. That's when you're gonna get paid, okay? It's not exactly in the month. That's why you wanna look at the early and the late curves. Okay, so this works really well. Not this curve, but the cash flow diagram. Our contractor actually took the cash flow diagram that I showed you up at the top of this presentation and went to the bank and negotiated the financing with the bank, looking at that um, based on that cash flow diagram. So that is a major advantage to using costs and getting your cost loaded schedule. 